You're listening to Two Chunks in a Hunk, a movie podcast where we give pumps and dumps. Hello and welcome to Two Chunks in a Hunk. My name is Jordan Wonders, and this week I'm your chunk. I'm Doge, and was it something a chunk? And I'm Carter. Space invasions, big car chase. Truth be told, I was ready to chunk it up till I met you today. That was not a bad Sam Jackson. Yeah, I, I sort of loved Thank your you. take of him as like a Georgia sweet tea maker. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that was, that was <laughs> sound very like really cool Southern gentleman. Now, yes. <laughs> Carter, you introduced yourself as the chunk, but did you know you're actually the hunk today? Wait, why? Because this is your first Marvel movie to ever hey! review with us. Yeah, you made it. It's because we're doing. We're going back. We're going back to take. Like, anytime there's surprises, yeah. I'm very worried. Surprise. No, this <laughs> wow. is your first time to ever review a Marvel movie. With I'll us. take it. Ant Man and the Wasp was our first and hopefully last episode of Two Chunks Only. Unfortunately, though, now that I'm reviewing a Marvel movie, it's definitely not going to get picked up by another podcast to critique it. That's Do you remember true. that's what happened? That yeah, was like I a really roundabout that. way of me saying. Like, one of the coolest things that's happened to this podcast, I have nothing to do with. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, that's okay. Uh, Well, (laughs) Another movie podcast. Sometimes the big boy's got to play. That was reviewing movie podcasts, reviewed ours, and it happened to be the episode. That's true. Yeah, shout out to Mark S. Played. Great show, great content. Thanks Thanks for doing that. That was cool. Now, um, before we jump into this movie, something that this movie that we'll reveal in a moment, I wonder what it is, talks about a lot is sort of like... uh, Time, not in like a time travel sense, but just like six years have passed, what happened before, what happened now. Mm-hmm. And I had this conversation with Callie last night before we ever even went to the movie. Uh, don't know what brought it up really, but I have a question. And my question is, do you each have a way in your mind that you view like time, like a year or oh, like time. anything like that? And if you do, what does it look like? Because I have time. a very like concrete way. Hmm. Like I might need to listen to y'all's remember. first before I have an idea. For me, years are vertical. January's at the top, oh, December's at the bottom. That. And then once we hit December, we tick back over up to the top of a new year. Mm-mm, I hate that. How interesting. Years that, are vertical. It freaks me out. Uh, March is orange. December is kind of a very, very dark bluish purple. And January is a bright new blue. Okay, we agree on the January color of all things. So for me, uh, a year is a circle and it's shaped like, um, you know, those uh, those like flying discs that are hollow in the a middle? Frisbee? Well, but the, the ones that, <laughs> yes. Are you talking about a plate? But the ones that don't have anything in the middle. Yes. It's shaped like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And each, the months are, they, uh, so January and December meet at the top. Like it's not. So it's a, well, Yeah. Circle of life. Right. But it goes, for me, it goes counterclockwise. So it's, it's like, like if, if it's here on the wall, it's like February, January, January going left. it's like January, February, March, April, May, June, July, really? like, it's like all the way around. But yeah. So like January is like a powder baby blue. February is purple. <laughs> Did you say like manga? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You can read it from, yeah. You go around like that. But yeah, it has always been that for me. How It freaks me out to not think of it like that. I get what y'all are talking about now. Cause the concept yeah. at first I didn't understand, but So what it looks like to me is kind of hard to explain, but it is almost like I'm scrolling like a side scroll. Okay. So I don't see all the months at once, but I think like there's a major event, especially a major event in the past and one that's been planned. It's almost like a heading for me. So it's like, interesting. I have a vision of what it will be like at the food festival at Disney World in October. So like October for me, which has always been kind of orange. It's yes. funny that you mentioned yeah. the colors. Yes. Um, it's like hazard cone orange for me. It has like yep. this Disney, it's like, orange it has this Disney dot on it. That's kind of okay. like a, yeah. this is happening. Okay. Interesting. Kind of thing. So it's almost like an agenda That's really for interesting you? Like though. a school agenda? Maybe not. Because it's, it's not necessarily agenda because I think agendas are filled with things that I don't necessarily want to do. Right. But this is more of a like... What's my assumed peak and what was the past peak? Yeah, interesting. And that's that, that's my month. So that would mean it probably changes from year to year outside of the colors and yeah. stuff. But it's what a, an hor- interesting a question. horizontal scroll. Uh, huh. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm vertical. Freaks me out. And that's really circle. that's really interesting. That's so weird. Yeah. yeah I, I, I it, it it occurred to me after I was talking to Callie that like most people probably do have a way that they visualize time. Then that's just yeah. always been you know so. Yeah, and that's only a bite of it because we're talking about the calendar year. Right. It's not like how you vision. And I drew I drew it for me, I drew it for Cali. And like I had never drawn it out before. And as I was drawing it, I was like, whoa, this is way more concrete than I thought it was. My life so the way that I view a calendar year is in microcosm, the way that I view my life in macrocosm 
like the 90s are kind of this purplish pink color and they're at the very, very top. And then as we move to 2000, it gets blue and it gets kind of green in the 2000 teens. And I don't know what color the 20s are going to be yet, but we're getting closer. The green is changing to something else and I don't know what it is. It's interesting. I'm really starting to get comfortable in the hunk skin right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's my first Marvel movie. Appropriately set in an era where I am the most of the three of us cognizant of yeah, living in. Sure. That's yeah. that's very true. So it's very good that I'm here yeah. to be honest. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't know what that block booster was. Yeah. yeah. How's it the, pronounced? The Blo- radio shack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Huh. No, that's okay. interesting. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll explain it, it when we get there. Thanks. Thanks if we have Thank if we you. have time. I need that. Yeah. So uh we are talking about a movie today that we've been very excited to talk about for a while. And that movie is, of course, called Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. Wait, wait, what? no, what? no. Sorry, guys. Now, Doge, here's what I need from you. Um, and I, I'm sorry, this is so spur of the moment and unexpected. I didn't plan for this. Oh, um, no. But what I need you to do is give me a synopsis of this movie. Oh, man. It's a okay. synopsis just like, like what's it about? Or? Yeah, so a synopsis. Yeah. So I, you, I haven't been on a Marvel episode yet. Can you give yet, me a so synopsis of what you need my synopsis to be? Just so if, really a, quick. if a movie is a book, uh-huh. yeah. then a synopsis is the back cover. Great. Okay. In a world. <laughs> Captain Marvel tells the story of a Kree warrior named Veers, um, who discovers that there may be more to her past than she realizes. She has virtually no memory, um, and she's trained as this elite Kree warrior to help them in their decades, centuries even, long fight against the Skrulls, these two alien races that are warring. Uh, throughout the course of this movie, Veers discovers that she is actually Carol Danvers from Earth, and that the scope of this war is very different than she has been told mm. for all of her remembered life. Mm. Mm. Again, I also haven't been, and, and we didn't necessarily do this for Green Book. That was a new release movie, but you're going to have to walk me through like critiquing a Marvel movie. Where do we put the spoiler alert? Like right now? now? Right now. Okay. Right now at this major very spoiler alert, yeah. as in we're going to talk about the entire movie. I hope this goes without saying, but if you have not seen this movie yet and <laughs> want to watch it fresh, don't listen to this Don't right now. Big time spoilers. Definitely still listen to it later. Spoilers so. ahoy for this and past Marvel movies. We're, we're going to end up. If you're not caught up, please don't listen to this. Oh, spoilers no, ahoy. That. Yeah. Whether girl or boy. Fair enough. It's a rhyme I've been workshopping. That's good. Dude. I think you're done. That's yeah, good. I think that's sort of the end. Arrive. It's you sort did of it. End of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's ready to be Great performed. Job. Thanks, guys. I needed that. Captain Marvel. We open. On the Cree homeworld, where Hala, ha- <laughs> I thought that every time they Very said that. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I hate it. Yes, on the planet of Hala, <laughs> for every your time. balas, we uh, Hala reminds me of what is the planet that the Council is in in Star Wars? The, Earth, the Coruscant. government. Coruscant. Coruscant. That reminds me of. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yep. Um, but Carol awakens from a bad dream. Bad dream. And goes to spar with her friend, Jan Rog, played by Jude Law. The incomparably talented Jude Law. Yeah. But those eyes. He's so good. They're not dude. even real, and I don't care. Those eyes are yeah. piercing. He's great in this. I so, like Jude Law. Uh, we sort of open with a, a sparring sequence that sets up some events later on of, you know, don't use your powers, fight me uh, one-on-one kind of a thing. And it's nice and fun. And mm-hmm. then we are introduced to... The AI that controls their home world. What is it? The all, all-knowing? Supreme intelligence. Supreme intelligence. Yep. Supreme intelligence. Yeah. Um, do you guys have any thoughts on supreme intelligence? Big pump on the supreme intelligence. I love that. That's an idea that, uh, I mean, obviously is is present in these stories that I've not seen executed before. Yeah. That was very, very cool and very good to me. Yeah. I, I, I love- I sense that you don't fully agree. Uh, well, I'm 50-50 on it. I- I love the fact that they like were willing to go so weird with such a thing. Like that Marvel was willing to take a bite out of the weird apple and be like, okay, let's let's play around with this. I feel I feel like they've been kind of grooming us for some weird with things like Doctor Strange. I think so too. Um and in a lot of ways this movie kind of reminds me of Doctor Strange, um, just sort of tonally. But yeah, um I I was not a fan of the way it looked when uh when Captain the, Marvel when Carol was communing with the when the are you talking about in the like physically in the physical world when the wires like went up her head and no, stuff? No, I thought or? that was cool. Um, okay. in the sort of like dream space or like like intelligence yeah, it space. It was so interesting because I was 
I don't know if I was having trying to have such an open mind for the creativity of just Marvel in general. Sure. And that happens sometimes. Like you're drinking the juice. You're like, oh, I know they do these things well. And sometimes you just assume that they do. Yeah. But it was like, I felt like that's what that world would have looked like in the 90s, like in a 90 produced movie. But that they weren't consistently doing that, right? right. Special effects no, didn't I look like special that. effects of so the 90s. It's interesting that you say that because so much of this movie felt like tonally similar to something like The Last Starfighter yeah. to me. Like, yeah. And I loved that so much. Yeah, yeah it was and, so interesting. And I don't have a problem with, and in fact, this is maybe the only effect in the whole movie that did not work for me. But um, yeah, it, it it felt weird to me in that like sort of milky artificial intelligence space. Yeah. It was strange to me. I had I a hard time with it. Yeah, it didn't super bother me. I can see that. Though. I mean, that's something that we've seen done a number of times. Like that kind of effect of like, we're in the mind world. So it's, we're standing in very shallow water and it's an infinite white space. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, but for me, it was almost like, like it, it was one of the only visually cheesy portions of the whole movie for me. Mm-hmm. And it, it just didn't work for me. So that, yeah, that was yeah. kind of a dump for me. I get it. But, but the, 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 uh, I keep, I can't remember what it's called. Supreme intelligence. Supreme intelligence. Uh, Taking itself the form. is a pump. It was cool. Yeah. yeah. And I love that. I love that it took the form. Cause in the comics, it's like a big green tentacle head. And I feel like maybe we weren't ready for that right. as, uh, consumers. I don't know. They gave us the cat. That's true. Which I did <laughs> which not is think, a lot. I did not think they were going to do that in this. Um, but I, I did like the idea of like it, in order to make you more comfortable, in order mm-hmm. to make you trust it more, it takes the person of the pump and that binning too. Yeah. yeah, she was for great. Real. Yeah, they Marvel does such a good job of kind of mixing it with some A list, and then like maybe A list of the past. Yeah, or I, I don't know. I, I've I've always loved their focus on casting. Similar, similar to like. Michelle Pfeiffer as Janet yeah. Van Dyne. It's like, that's a great yeah. cast. I would not that's have a good thought point. of, but yeah. that's a great or choice. Kurt Russell as Ego. Exactly. Like, yeah. So good. Um, but Kind of the people that were these movies made 25 years ago. They would be the they ones. They would be the yes. ones in the movies. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's You're really right. That. That's great. You're completely right. Like if, if Captain Marvel was made in 1995, Annette Bening would be in that movie. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. So um, from, from our Supreme Intelligence moment, we, mm-hmm. we go on a mission. Right, we're, we're we're sort of we're sort of dragged along pretty quickly through the beginning part of this movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we end up on a mission going to um, like what, a scroll stronghold. Going to retrieve us. What is the? Did did this Kree team have a name? Yes. Do they have? And it wasn't just their suits, but the suits helped. Does this kind of have like a Green Lantern vibe, like a Lantern vibe to Very you? Very much. With this crew. Very much. Okay, gotcha. I I I dug it. I think they all were separately cool. Like that's one of my favorite things. And that's probably why I love Dungeons and Dragons so much. Um, but like when everybody kind of seems to be so different and have a different role, like yeah. I, w- I can't wait to see what this weapon is. Oh, yeah. he's got two swords. Awesome. Right. This guy's like a shooter. This is our sniper. Like I love those kinds of yeah. almost like uh, ancient Asian culture stories where it's like, yeah. this is the best at this. Like this is the best warriors. at that. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I mean, it's it's your, it's kind of a trope. It's kind of the six man team stro- trope. Are you guys remember where you have like, the gunner and the lancer yep. and like those different roles that those mm-hmm. people fill. Yeah. Um, the Kree are, are part of the the peacekeeping core, which I guess is their army is called star force. Okay. I don't know if that's what you're only thinking of. That might be yeah. what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Exactly. Actually. I um, it- but while we're on this, like kind of plan it with the, the scroll outpost, um, we get our first look into the shape shifting nature of the scroll. Oh my Love gosh. Love that effect. That effect Very was so cool. good. So not only was the visual effect good, but like it made me distrustful of everybody for the whole movie in a really cool so way. So the visual effect Honestly? particularly is something that uh, reading these stories for years about the scroll, I've always had a hard time visualizing like how would that actually look? Because right. in the comics, it's it's hard to convey that sense of like organic motion, but it really did. It looked biological. It and did. It, it was appropriately gross. Yeah. I right. Think, when yeah, it definitely yeah. was gross. Yeah. And you talk about like not being able to trust anything that's going on in the movie after you see that there's a race that can do this because of the intertwining of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, part of me was like, so I'm looking back at Infinity War. I'm like, were any of these people? Well, scroll invasion is a real thing. That's a big thing. Secret invasion is one of the biggest Avengers stories where basically it was revealed that for years, these people have been scrolls this whole time. And so kind of a, it was a, a weeding out of like, who is scrolls? There's a lot of speculation that the next big event that Marvel is going to build toward after Thanos is done and dealt with is going to be a secret invasion type storyline. Really? Over it, Celestials, you think? I see, I don't know. Like, I think a scroll invasion would be cool to a point. 
But there's a, an element of scroll invasion that is necessarily bait and switch, which I'm not a fan of for long form right. storytelling. Like that might be one good movie, right? right. But like a civil war style. Please yeah. don't build the next ten years. Or you could do a two part Avengers about the the secret invasion, but please don't lead up to that for the next ten years and have me get invested in a character for ten years. Only to find only out. at the end yeah. to find out. Oh, this guy never existed, or this guy was a scroll, or right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. But it does it does lead to some some great moments. Particularly, I'm thinking about Phil Coulson's reveal of, "Hey, I'm still at the blockbuster." Like I did not see that coming <laughs> at that was great. All. Oh, yep. and even some kind of creepy ones too, to where they end up at her friend's house yeah, and did her not friend like is that. looking at the window and seeing her friend with her child. Did you know, not it's like, like yeah. that, but loved it. They also. they did that and they didn't do it too much. And I think it would have been really easy right. to just be like. Change, 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 change. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or maybe they did it too much, but they did it well. I don't, I don't know. feel like they did it too much. I feel like it was no just enough. Okay. But um, on this scroll home world, the big thing that we're looking for here is so this is not actually a scroll right. Home world. It's an this outpost a, on a planet. This is a uh, Cree. Yeah, it's in the Cree system. Isn't it's it? Yeah. They're they're essentially trying to go retrieve this spy, and they say scrolls might be around. Yeah. yeah. But they don't hey, know where. listeners, Good call. I was the one who. Directed that in the right direction. Yeah, thank for you, Carter. Good call. I, Good you call. don't know how big of a win that is yeah. for me. <laughs> thank you, Carter. It's it's like yeah, but um, Captain Marvel is taken. Carol is taken. Veers is taken, yep. and um, we get this scene sort of of scrubbing through memories while the scroll. I loved, I loved that. Yeah, it was I so cool, this. so that creative, was so good. Yeah, it was a lot of fun too. Be like hearing the them like so <laughs> talk and wait, go back, go back. Yeah, yeah I love um, that. Ben yeah. Mendelsohn, by the way. Hey. We're here. Whoa. Ben Mendelsohn is my super pump for this Really? Movie. Man, he's great. Ben Mendelsohn is somebody who I feel has been criminally underrated for most of his career in yeah. film. He was fan-freaking-tastic. Yeah, I, yeah think he's, so I think he's literally been criminally casted. Because I he's agree. usually... But, like, even Marvel's play to cast him as someone who you're going to assume is a bad guy that throughout. Was smart. And then switch it. Like, yeah. I still was like, no, because he doesn't play this, right? right. Yeah. And so that I thought that was so, brilliant. Right. So good. Pump. Almost but my super pump. It is, yeah, he was very good. It is almost impossible for me to see him without my brain instantly going, can we get some girls in here? <laughs> the, Dark Dark the Dark Knight Rises. Uh, his, oh, yeah. To me, the thing that solidified him as a super pump was his ability to, because he is he is on screen, like, virtually never. Like, actual Bill, Bill yeah. Middle. Ben Mendelsohn is virtually Never on screen. Right. He's got like maybe two scenes where he's actually Ben Mendelsohn. Right. But the way that he is able to emote and act through these layers and layers oh, and so layers good. of prosthetics. That's good. It's incredible. It's and I've so never good. thought of him as somebody who would be good at that type of. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a different type of he's, acting. I mean, I he's not Doug Jones, right? We're like, that's right. what he does. Right. So. Doug Jones from Hellboy? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's more Indian. physical, I think. Yeah. But I mean, great job. But anyway, um, we crash land on Earth into a blockbuster and yeah. it starts popping off. Okay. Was that supposed to be funny? Because I don't think that's supposed to be funny that you see a like a blockbuster sign. No, I think it's supposed to say 90s. Okay. We Jordan and I saw this together yeah, last night. Yeah, our theater crowd was we awful. We had the worst crowd just assuming everything was going to be a joke and so there sure. was there were many points where I was like Radio Wait, Shack was a joke. Radio, Radio Shack, Shack was set up as a joke. I don't think that blockbuster I was don't a either. joke. But anyway, neither here nor there. But um I love our interaction with the um, security guy. That was all great. But our next big thing that we really end up at is her meeting with Nick Fury the next day. Yes. So, um, wait, did y'all not hear about anything about the, some of the deep imagery of that, that people were assuming? So it was like, it was a, so this is a blockbuster film, right? It would be categorized as a blockbuster. Yeah. Crashing through a blockbuster. And it's a woman crashing through the ceiling into oh, the blockbuster. I love that. Okay, so yeah, I had that was a real deep dive into like trying to look into some stuff. But I was when I watched that, I was like, that still doesn't make it funny. But it was yeah, kind of a no, I love that's that. cool. And it's another one of those things where you just assume that there's just so much depth to every little bit of frame that you see. Right, that is interesting though. I've I've I didn't think about that. Hey, this might be the first time this has ever happened. But as I'm thinking through this movie. I'm going to retract my super pump. Whoa, Whoa ben. This is the first time this has ever happened. Ben Mendelsohn, I still love you and I still think you are far and away one of the most enjoyable parts of this movie. But there is a particular element that I am saving my super pump for. Way to stick with the theme and throw a twist in there. Ben, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Well, ben, no, I'm afraid that me. you're going to do the same one as me. I don't want that. <laughs> Maybe my super pump has been a scroll this the whole oh. time. <laughs> um. I'm going to go ahead and talk about something so I because I think it's going to be Doja Super Pump and he can just go ahead and do it again. Uh, <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson walks into the mix as Nick Fury looking about 25 years younger and holy moly, 
The effects on this guy are unbelievable. Right? It's unreal. Not my super pump. Okay. I've, but it's unbelievable. Um, and Phil Coulson looks great, younger yeah. too, but I noticed it on him. I, yeah. di- I didn't notice it once. See, I, I couldn't tell if I was noticing it on Phil Coulson or if I'm just not familiar with what Clark Gregg looked like 25 years yeah, ago. But like, a- for me, this very much looked like Samuel L. Jackson walked off the set of Jurassic Park onto the set yeah, of Captain yeah. Marvel. Right? Yeah. That's good. That's very good. And, and I, I mean, he it. was... He was, I think he was the perfect sort of sidekick character for this movie. Yeah. Um, Because I loved, like, he wasn't in control yet, and he didn't have it all together yet, and he wasn't scary yet. Mm -hmm. He was just a guy, and he was just basically like, I'll do whatever you need. I'm I'm listening to whatever you have to say, Carol. Let's do this. Well, it gets to, and that was one of the biggest pumps of this entire film, was that it it lets us really get to know Fury a little more. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, I was just thinking that. Just different, like, layers of his personality, and... I mean, we don't really get to, to like, hide. We have we have only ever seen him in just the craziest world, right? He knows all of these extraterrestrials yeah. and super powerful people right. and super soldiers, but to kind of see him even early on being like, I'm starting to just believe everything. But he's just so open to it, and I think that's something that happens with any superhero movie. Like, you're going to have to come to grips with the fact that people are going to be okay with it too soon. Yeah. Right? That somebody's going right. to come in and... But you're, like, at this point, super? he's working for S.H.I.E.L.D. that has already dealt with, like, the, like, b- essentially bioengineering of Captain America yep. and, yep. like, yep. fighting Red Skull. Like, there are secrets that and they know of. this is... We're coming right off of all the Cold War missions of Ant-Man and the Wasp, the original Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah. At this point, this is 1995. So, three years prior is when the Winter Soldier assassinated uh, Tony Stark's parents. So, like... That people this know is, stuff. Like, yeah. He's high in on this. Sure. Like, man, something bigger is happening. Yeah. I don't know all of what it is, but something bigger is happening. I wish right. we had seen him fight more. Because in the comics, yeah. isn't Fury actually incredible? Yeah. Okay. So. Like, very good. Yeah. Um, but I, I like that we got to see him be kind of physical in that hallway mm-hmm. um, yeah. at the, like, secret Pegasus base. I thought yeah. that was cool. Their relationship was good. Yeah. It was very good. Um, but... We get some more scroll, uh, sort of shape shifting fun, and the we train punch scene. A, we punch the a grandma. Scene. The train scene's really great. great, and I love the. Oh my gosh! There's the pre credit, like the Marvel production introduction that they've. I yeah. got, we didn't even I, talk about that. I got a little bit emotional. Yeah, it's it's all the Stanley yeah. stuff. I wasn't ready for and it. And then pulling down the uh, magazine, it's Stanley. She Leona. smiled. That was great. That was really. Yeah. Good. That was great. That and that, really that's good. an example of fourth wall breaking that doesn't bother me. No. Exactly. Not at all because it's it's, it's homage. homage. Uh, yeah. Isn't isn't Endgame the last one that Stan filmed? That he was actually in? Yeah, I don't think he filmed a cameo for Far no. From Home. So I think Endgame might be his last one. Interesting. Which is good. I think that's that feels appropriate. Oh, it definitely does. And it feels appropriate if it's highly emotional. Yeah. 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 I think I agree with that. But um Speaking of highly emotional, that that's something that I sort of want to talk about real quick. Um, so, I think I'm getting burnt out on origin stories. Okay. I think that as necessary as I know they are to understand the characters, and mm-hmm. um, Callie was telling me last night that she actually loved that it was so informative so she understands who Carol is and all that stuff. And, yeah. I, and I love that too. Yeah. But I think there's something necessarily emotionally detached about origin stories because you know that they're going to go on and do a bigger thing later. Right. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and maybe it's just because we've seen countless origin stories, but um, at points it was it was kind of hard for me to appreciate the stakes of this movie because it was like, well, it's, you know, it's an origin story, so she's going to win and find the powers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and I had a hard time with that. Like the stakes galactically or... All of the above, yeah. Um, but which is why I like that they zoned it in on the fate of this like small group of scroll, which was mm-hmm. great because you wanted them to survive. Yep. But I think I think for me, what I, what I realized about the movie is I think my my super dump for Captain Marvel the movie is it, it at times it was hard for me to emotionally invest in some moments, not all. Yeah, as I'll talk about later. But there were just some <clears> moments where it was like, man, I wish that that felt more permanent, or man, I, w- I wish that that felt more concrete to me. Okay. Um, and I think that's sort of where the Doctor Strange comparison comes to me in my head because I watched Doctor Strange going, "Cool movie." I care way more about what he's going to do for our team later. Right. Yeah. And it, for Captain Marvel, it was it was cool movie. I care way more about what she's going to do for our team later. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, 
yeah, I, I think there were times where I struggled with that throughout the movie and it, it sort of took me out of it a I little think bit. We've talked about that before on the show and maybe this was close to a year ago. Um, but we've talked before about how Marvel kind of insulates themselves from the fallout of a story like that. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like I'll still go to see this even if I am more invested in the story of Captain America and the Avengers. Mm-hmm. I'll still go to see this and this this isn't the reason I went to see this, but a person could go to see this hypothetically because it's a part of that story, not because of anything about this story itself. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I think there's an easy argument to be made that like the majority of the reason this particular movie needed to come out at the time it did was to make it believable when she comes in yeah. and smashes face next movie. Yeah. And make us not go, wait, how is she so strong? We now in this movie go, oh, because she is that strong. Yeah. And I then think, it's more I, I easy. Think it's going to be tough for them to integrate her into the team, though, because I don't, I think it's disrespectful to the established characters for her to come in and just be like, oh, well, we'll let her fight. Like, it's kind of what happened. It would right. be what happened at the third act of Justice League, where it's like, these are characters who've been trying their very best this whole movie. But then all they have to do is go wake up this super powerful God being from being dead. Yeah. And then he just fights for them and wins the fight for them. Which is why I think her job is going to be holding things off while they time travel back and yeah. do it without her because she hasn't even been called yet. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, something that Marvel Studios is doing so well. And I can't even say that there's at risk of anything, especially not now because of how much momentum they have. Like, So there, if you look at how much money each movie is making and you go like chronologically, it's not like every single one is making more than the one before. Right, yeah. right. There's these big hits, and it doesn't necessarily. And that's why I'm saying it's not a risk because if you're not making a lot and you're a Marvel movie, you're only making six hundred million dollars, right? So it's like, <laughs> yeah. like uh, you've got uh, Avengers: Infinity War and then Ant Man and the Wasp, right? And so sure. it's like, but I think what's so smart about this, from a business standpoint, and then also from a story standpoint, and I'm agreeing with you, Jordan. I think we, there's going to just be movies that we just not necessarily deal with because we're still enjoying it. I don't sure, want to say it's course. like, oh, I got to get through another origin story. Yeah, no, of course. But like they're they're just building something that they have the time to build. Right. It's the kind of thing that DC tried to just not have yeah. at all or try and do it in such a little bitty tiny bit and sure. it just it wasn't going to pull off. I'm interested to know your experience though with that approach to storytelling because that's something I'm super familiar with is, man, there's this a big event comic coming out and I'm real excited to see like Avengers versus X-Men. So mm-hmm. there's this big event comic coming out and I'm going to pick up these little tie-in comics because I want to know every single thing going into this story. So that's a form of storytelling that I'm very used to. Right, yeah. I'm super experienced with. I didn't even with. think about that, yeah. But I think that's kind of what's, ha- like we've got these big event movies and then there's, there's the tie-in movies like Amen and the Wasp and Captain Marvel's a tie-in movie. Right. But the big event movies are the Avengers movies. So Carter, was that like an adjustment to get used to that? No, I don't think so because I think a lot of the times in some of the best fantasy, which I would put I'm putting superheroes in fantasy sure. somehow yeah, because they're fantasy. somewhere in between. Um, but one of the biggest pulls for me and what are, I mean, historically one of the most successful franchises, all those franchises are so built around history. And there's already like this stuff that they throw in every now and then. In Lord of the Rings, I mean, you you do have a chronological thing that's going on where time is jumping a little bit for, we're going to follow this crew and now this crew. Yeah. But intermixed in between is like, well, this because of this or yeah. this influence because of that. And so... I'm. I think I've always enjoyed being immersed. Yeah. yeah. Um. And so things like that. No, I think I felt it's right. Very, in. It's, it's just very really different than traditional like numbered sequel storytelling. Yeah. Like it's different than sitting down to watch Rocky one, two, three, four. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. It's a different type of storytelling, but it's. I don't know. It's just it's engaging. It's a new way to. Well, yeah. those. It, I, I feel like Marvel right now is proving that it's equally viable as well. Yeah. Which is cool. I agree. Yeah. And I was yeah and. For the listener to know, like, I didn't just, and I'm not, I know neither of them assume this, like, they know me, but I did not watch all the Marvel movies. Like, I was into Marvel before this even happened. Oh, yeah. Like, that was yeah. me from the start. So it wasn't like, uh, oh, I better catch up. I'm not going to have the knowledge that these two do, but that's great because I get to enjoy it like the listener does. But um, yeah, this was always a, already a thing for me. Yeah, that's awesome. But um, uh, from there, we we sort of go on a, a fun adventure to the Pegasus place. Pump on the Pegasus logo. It's a weird yeah, thing cool. to pump on. With the but W? Like, like a little graphic design thing, that, that thing on their hat is mm-hmm. a great logo for a company called Pegasus. It's yeah. just great logo design. Definitely. Yeah, and because what's the what's the main lady's name? Marvell, but what's her like human name? Lawson. Or, yeah. 
Wendy Lawson? Something yeah. Lawson. Because yeah. so that, that's what the W was for? Like the wings of the little Pegasus? Oh, interesting. There's a W up in there. Didn't Pretty think cool, that. I guess. So while we're at the Pegasus facility, uh, we get uh, one of my other sort of major dumps for the movie, which is just like, there, there is sp- there's cheese enough cheese to go around sometimes like Mm -hmm. just a few moments where it's like okay let's let's move past it let's keep going not enough to actually bother me but enough for me to be like all right like fury's Fury's love for goose no i loved that okay that didn't bother (laughs) me at all no i was thinking more along the stuffs of like the stuffs more along the stuffs of like you let me fiddle with that paper or with that scotch Uh, tape and you could have just but it's like (laughs) like, i love that that kind of you you did i think i enjoyed it because a lot of their relationship and the personalities are thrown around a little bit, but it felt like a Men in Black, like a okay. KNJ. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't thought about that a little yeah. bit. Um, no one was as <laughs> stoic as as Tommy Lee Jones' character, and sure. not can showing be. any emotion. Nobody can be, right? Yeah, but good. It, it felt like that. Like sure. you've got this young gun in here who's probably a little more adept than the pro, but doesn't know as much. And yeah, yeah, there's yeah. just. I love their relationship. It was a their fun, relationship was fun, great. Fun, like, buddy cop dynamic. Yeah. I, liked I was it. just using that as an example of, like, there was just a few places where it was just a little too much Swiss and cheddar for my taste, mm-hmm. but well, I could scoot past it pretty easy. Jordan, we need to transition to shout announcements, but we're leading into my super dump. What do I do? I need you to tell me what to do. Well, Doge, I think that, as far as I'm concerned, it's okay with me if you just want to transition us for me. Okay. I'm wow. just kidding. It's time for shout announcements, the part of the show where we shout out and that announce. Knows. Welcome to shout announcements, the part of the show where we shout stuff out and give announcements. Here we go. <laughs> We'd like to give a shout out, a big one, to Waxbase and Tyler Station. We drink your coffee, we record stuff, and we're in ya right now. Yeah, make the joke. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah, there singer there from, so, from the one. songs we love. <laughs> sail away, sail away, sail away. There it is. Very good. We also want to give thank a shout you, out Podbean, to Podbean. Thank you, Wax Race, Thank you. We pay you money. We put stuff on you. Podbean. Podbean. Anya, like, like, nope. like, like nope. Anastasia. Nope. <laughs> Uh, this week, I want to give a shout out to everyone who has voted in our yeah, series yeah. poll. Thank you so much for making your voice heard. Listen, statistically, scientifically, and spiritually, we know that you love Disney movies mm, yeah. Yeah. because yep. you have to. You have to. Yeah. So vote for the six ones that you love the most mm. on our website. And we're going to talk about those for the next six weeks in our upcoming series called The Disney Dozen. That's true. This is... I think it's 13 the story movies. Of a girl. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 13 movies you have to pick some number of movies that you have to pick from. I can't There's remember. There's some movies. There's some movies you have to pick from and they were released from 1991 to 2002. These are the years that we've kind of identified are the Disney does. And these are the yeah. years that Disney was creating the stuff that really shaped formative media really that we consumed in our childhood and growing up, adolescence, like this is some big stuff, some important stuff to the three of us, and it's fun. We are. Gonna, it is fun. We are so excited to review these. Movies, well, and it's so. been kind of fun. We've we've been able to track how these votes are going, and yeah. I can tell you of the six that if it ended today, those six that are in the lead, there's some that I very much expected to be where they are. Mm. Some that I didn't. Some real dark. But a good thing there. about the Disney dozen is I don't care what six movies we review. Exactly. I'm gonna have a good time. Oh yeah, exactly. it's gonna be a nice one. But if you care what six movies we review, go to two chunks and a hunk dot com. I think actually that's just going to redirect you right to the vote page. Yep. You don't even have to go backslash vote. Front page. We made it easy for you. Mm, but pick your did. six movies, put your name and your email in. We're not going to email you. We just need to make sure everybody only votes once. But then push push submit and it's there and we have it and we know. That's all it takes. And we thank you. Speaking of pushing, mm. go ahead and push subscribe. If you haven't <gasps> yes, yet. please. Yes. And oh my goodness, please. Please, please push review. Please. Okay, I'm, so, I'm like, I've got my head on screwed on straight and everything right now and I don't sound yeah like I'm losing it but guys please it's easy please just leave a review one word just two one word words. two words three even four I even heard some gone up to five six perhaps <laughs> Any, really up. it's your choice it's dealer's choice on number of words could they do and seven what words uh, yeah how about eight it? There's like one listener who's like, uh, then they scrub like another 20 <laughs> minutes up forward and we're like, like 70. 3,234. <laughs> we all have way different, way different theories we on what happens quickly. in 20 minutes. Yeah, um, I count so slow. I have a shout out as well. <gasps> Carter. Uh, shout out to Maggie. Mm, Maggie, Maggie. Uh, texted me and it wasn't really anything that I was thinking about, but it was really encouraging. But she said, hey, I was kind of unsure if I was going to listen to Green Book because I hadn't seen it yet. 
she said, whatever, I'm just going to give it a shot. And uh, so she did listen, even though she hadn't seen Green Book, knowing that she wanted to see Green Book. And she said, while there was some stuff that we talked about that didn't necessarily ruin something for her, um, overall, it made her want to watch it even more, which is great. Okay, so good. it was, nothing was like truly spoiled. And good. so at first I was like, does that mean we didn't do a good job? Of- <laughs> well, it's because it's all performance in that movie. Talking like about, yeah, yeah. the best part for is sure. the performance. Yeah. For stuff like for stuff like big franchise movies, like if you care about the franchise and haven't seen the latest entry, don't listen to our review of that. Yeah. Like if you're super invested in what goes on in the Fast and Furious world, but haven't seen Hobbs and Shaw by the time our review comes out, don't, don't listen, listen to Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah. Don't listen to it. But it, at the end of the day, it is your choice. Yeah. Yeah. That's for true. sure. And yeah, right now, think of a lot of what <clears throat> our library is, is just something to just kind of come along with you. Yeah. With the experience if you haven't seen it yet or if you have. Yeah. That's true. So I'm going to be really forward with you guys. Okay. We're not even halfway to the reviews. Right. But we need yep. And we need them bad. We need them real bad. It's got nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with the listener. Right. Well, Being I mean, lazy. I left the review oh. yesterday. Oh. Did you leave? Have you left a review, Jordan? I have, but Carter just oh, got really you have just with our people. Her. Locked hmm. me into a corner. <laughs> have you left a review, Carter? I haven't because I haven't decided if I like this podcast. Right. I get yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell either I get sometimes. That. <laughs> <laughs> so Carter... Yeah, Actually, I'm going to go leave a review. I'm going to do it right now. Okay. While you're doing that, I'll tell people what they need to do. Please. While Carter's leaving a review, it has fallen to me, this great burden, which I now bear with dignity and with honor, to tell you, the listener. Doge, how do you spell your full last name? Uh, W-I-L-L-I-S. Oh. Okay, great. (laughs) Do. Do Willis. (laughs) Sorry, one more. And how do you spell egregious? A. Oh, man. E. Okay. E, 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 I, I honestly think it's E G R E D I O U S. No, that's, that's not me. it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we need 200 reviews. And once we have those reviews, we become eligible to be Rotten Tomatoes movie critics, mm. which would be a huge deal. RTMC. Big. We get that RTMC status, certified golden RTMC status. Would be a big deal. Huge dream come true for the three. Huge dream come true for the three of us. He'll, huge deal come true. Huge, just, I don't know. That was very good. Uh, and also, just to prove a point here, uh, in the time that it's taken us to talk about it, Carter has already left a review on our podcast. Yep. And he is finished. Already done. And Thank he you. even has one of those Android phones. So it's oh, like, gosh, he's got one Android. of the ones that are dumb at typing. But that's the uh, the most important thing that you could do for our friendship and our love is not have an Android phone. I mean, uh, leave us a review. <laughs> On our podcast. Droid. Isn't that like their little... And now it's back to the show! (laughs) And we're back. And so anyway, we were leading into my super dump. Remind me what you said before we shouted things out and gave announcements. Mm, Couldn't tell (laughs) you. You were talking about the the layer of cheese whiz that Ah, permeates some of the scenes in this movie. Ah. Uh, And my super dump is... It it kind of applies to this movie, but it's something I've talked about on the show before as it relates to Marvel. Um, and I think I particularly mentioned this in our review of Thor Ragnarok. Um, Carter's voice sounds very different in that episode, and he goes by a different name. But it is the three of us. Don't worry. Um, I got so much more unattractive since then. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I talked at one point about Marvel has this tendency to like stop just short of letting our heroes be heroes. Hmm. You know what I mean? And stop just short of unapologetically saying, yeah, they're a superhero and it's a little silly, but they're saving the whole world. Right. And there is an element of that at some points in this. I think this movie actually did like shied away from that tendency better than most Marvel movies that aren't Captain America. Right. Uh, I think this movie did a great job of letting Carol be a hero who unapologetically saves the world and sure it's a little goofy and sure it's a little old fashioned, but she saves the world and that's something that we can all get excited about. But there are other elements where the thing that sticks out to me the most in this movie is the way that Fury loses his eye. And I'm sure we'll get to that at some point, but there are some things that I, I wish had not been played for jokes that, that I felt should have been taken a little more seriously. So yeah. Kind of reaching to find a super dump because spoilers, I I really did like this one a lot. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and Marvel often falls victims to, Humoring themselves out of what could have been the a really poignant out situation. To, yeah, the, the the Ragnarok thing that I'm referring to is whenever Hulk jumps out and he's expecting to Hulk out on his way down to the Bifrost Bridge to fight the army of Draugr, and he and it just he doesn't it doesn't happen. He smacks he just the, smacks yeah. the bridge. Elements of like, I mean, come on, like that 
don't cheat us out of a cool moment just because you get a cheap laugh in the mo- in like right now. Yeah. yeah. I actually think this movie redeems itself in that way um, in in a scene that I want to talk about in just a little bit. But okay. first, I want to get through. Um, we, we, we meet uh, Carol's best friend and her mm-hmm. daughter. Mm-hmm. Huge pump from her. Her daughter might be the cutest kid I've ever She's seen She's adorable. Movie. But um, I, who's the actress that played her friend? Oh, let me look um, her up. Good grief. I'm blanking here. But she did such a good job. She did a great she job. She was excellent. Like when she was talking to Carol at the kitchen table about like the hard part wasn't Lashana losing you Lynch. The, the hard part. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The, when she was talking about like the hard part was the hard part is knowing that like you're back and that means you were out there and like oh it's too stubborn to too di- stubborn like to that die. whole thing was so I do good. Want to dump the dialogue recording. I'm looking at Adam to see if he noticed this on the, her in that scene. The dialogue on both actresses in that scene was very very bad. Like it was, the, the I don't know. Run if they the got, tide compression in yeah, and out. I don't know if they yeah. got a bad recording of that, but there was so much room noise and so oh, like it interesting. Was, yeah. It was rough. It almost ruined that scene for me. I noticed that. But um we go we go off on our mission to save the scroll. Mm-hmm. To go up to their uh to go up to their floating laboratory. Well, yeah, so we get the the twist if, essentially. Oh yeah, that, the big twist, that, of course. Yeah, the the Cree, this is a war of Cree aggression. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're not like they're just relentlessly pursuing the scroll across the galaxy, which is something yeah. that I am very glad happened in this movie because that's a huge part of the Kree and Skrull story is that the guys who look like the bad guys are not the bad guys. Right. It's the ones that look most similar to us that have the greatest capacity for evil. Right. So yeah. that was so that's canon then. Yeah, that was time. that the scroll are actually but, not. So yeah, it's it's not quite as black and white in the comics. Yeah, the like, scroll sure. are played as villains occasionally. Like it's pretty much just like, hey, you thought the Kree were the good guys, but I'm exposing the latent xenophobia in you. You only thought they were the good guys because they look like blue people. Yeah, but neither of them are really all that great. This movie yeah. paints the scrolls as much more heroic. So yeah, yeah. Um, but we uh, we go up into space. We go up into space, and we, oh, well, we get the change to the new suit colors. I love that. Um, I'm I'm middle ground on that. It was sort I'm of a between. weird way to do it. I mean, me. I, it was sweet. Like, but what are the odds that her suit's just like, by the way, we can change the colors of this at will, but we only all have the same one mostly. Right, and it's tough because it's like... It's a uniform. There's times too where I, I have to not let too many things bother me. Same. Because then, because I've always been the one that someone, because I, I actually love Thor. Like, not the whole series. I think Thor, the... The Dark World. The Dark World the is the one. worst of all the Marvel yeah, movies. So Agreed. But I like Thor the character, and I really loved the first Thor. This hit a lot of those same beats. Yeah, me. but I think a lot of people. I've I've always been the one to where someone's like, "Yeah, but I didn't." And I was like, "You realize this is, you don't believe in that one part. This this guy is a god, right? Right. Yeah. So yeah. why is that not bothering yeah. you? Yeah. So I I had that moment when all of a sudden, and I can't again. The younger generation, she's probably Generation Z. This little girl. Just happens to know how to use a galactic wristband to change the color of a. Well, they're like always with, playing their Fortnite without any coaching. In 1995, that's definitely knew what exactly she was doing. how to get how to make it look like her shirt. I was like, oh, okay, but but you gotta I don't know you gotta fall back on like this. The little wrist computer has some sort of smart sure, feature, sure, right? Like sure. it's a universal. It was encoder, enough for me to go decoder, eh, yeah. and then move right past it. It was that's the magic button that is just like this is our it's kind of our Deus Ex suit. Like yeah. shot out of the suit where it's like, man, this suit can kind of just do anything. Yeah. Sure. But uh, we go up to space. We go up to space and we discover a tribe of scroll people waiting for their family to come back and take yeah. them away to yeah. a safe place, which is very cool. I loved that reveal. loved that so much. Yeah, that was really good. I really want to jump ahead. Uh, and so I don't, so I'm trying not to because all I want to do is jump ahead to uh, the fight in the desert. That's all I want to talk about right now. And so yeah. uh, there's some beats that we want to hit before we get to that point. I mean, the Tesseract has, yeah. is powering Tesseract this. Is a That's big a, deal. a huge big deal. Isn't the fight in the desert basically the end? Yeah. Okay. Then I don't yeah, want to jump right there. Jump there. That's, why I, <laughs> That's why I said this. <laughs> That's all I want to talk about. Yeah, so I actually really, really love the fight in Marvel's yeah, laboratory. So um, the I whole element great. of she's... When she finally... So to me, a, a dump is that it never occurred to her that like, hey, this little thing on my neck kind of zaps me every time I use my cool powers. Right. Yep. Maybe I should pull it off. But I love the moment that she actually does really break free of the influence of the Kree. So here's the thing. I'm realizing that this is the moment that I meant. I thought it was on the desert. There's two separate moments that I like. This is the one that I meant. This is my super pump for the whole movie. Take Where it. She's, Talk about it. Go. So I could have watched 10 straight hours of her standing up over and over again throughout yeah. her whole life. That was really yes. cool. They that set up, montage was fantastic. I, I can see... Okay. 
So they they set up this scene of her and she's she's down kind of locked up on her knees and she needs to get up and fight and she can't. And then mm-hmm. it goes back through all of these times in her life where she had fallen and hurt herself or fallen and, and made a mistake or fallen and had faced the choice of get back up or call it quits. Yeah. And over and over again, there are these figures of either authority or some dude telling her that she's not good enough right. over and over in every scene. And there were clips of things we had seen throughout the movie right. already. Yeah. But then we see the ending of all of them in rapid succession of her. Yes. She stands up over it. And I'm getting chills talking about it. The fact that like, being human isn't her weakness, actually. That's her strength. Yeah. And I'm telling you, if they play their cards right, this is the new, I can do this all day. Yeah. This is the, like, the new thing can be, and I hope it is, but the new thing can be Captain Marvel always stands back up. Yeah. Always. No matter what. And like, yeah. I'm still getting chills talking about it. That it was, was really, really well done. So powerful. So cool. And it, it I, really briefly, I know we're kind of nearing the end of our episode, but really quickly, I want to talk about Brie Larson. She was a controversial choice for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't honestly really care what she said about. Yeah. Whatever. whatever. Um, I know a lot of people had other actresses in mind for Captain Marvel. I think that she was out of the park, the perfect choice. So to everyone who had other actresses in mind for Captain Marvel, I would say, what issue are you basing that on? Because Captain Marvel is a character who, yes, is influential in the comics, but her personality, her deal, like her characterization changes on a whim. Like right. she, she has not been consistently, like you can't point to her and say she has these attributes in the same way that you can to Captain America or to Iron Man. Like she's not been as well-defined and so I, I don't know. I, I I would argue that you probably shouldn't have had an actress in mind for Captain Marvel. Or at least not one that you got so attached to that you couldn't see somebody else. Because I exactly. think that Brie Larson is, I mean, she was fun. She was funny. Yeah. She, she was, was great. powerful. She was scary when she was going on. I mean, she had yeah. she had everything that I wanted from this. She's So she's my super pump. Okay. Yeah. Um, and a lot of this was built off of, you know, that gosh, for, for the next chapter, or the next phase. Are they mm-hmm. calling them phases in Marvel? Like yeah, we're going are, yeah. into we're going into phase four, right yep. after Endgame. So it's assumed she's going to be one of the leaders. I think I'm pretty phase. sure it's basically guaranteed. Because yeah. wouldn't yeah. you th- wouldn't you think? And we don't have to go out and like say Star Lord is the fourth or fifth, but isn't it basically? I mean, of course, all of Civil War is between it's Iron Man and Captain America, right? And then maybe we say Thor, or I don't know, I don't know who we would say like the third of the big like leading the charge kind of thing is. Yeah. I, I, it might have been confirmed that Infinity War, it felt like it was the passing off of leadership from Captain America to Black Panther because those were the two that were that. running yes. at the head of everybody. I, my prediction is Captain Marvel, Black Panther, Spider-Man eventually are sort of going to run too. the show. But. Me too. And so, <laughs> um, man, what an immense amount of pressure, right? Yeah. I'm not just super pumping like, man, I'm so glad she dealt with it. Um, right, yeah. But, it, it it felt good enough and it felt like she did a good enough job with it that, I mean, she feels like Captain Marvel. This is our first yep. lead that is an Oscar winner. Yep. Yeah, The first true. title character Marvel hero that has won an Oscar before. Yeah. And so, yes, all these other actors have been dramatic and she in other dramatic for roles. Room, right? She mm-hmm. won for Room yeah. like three or four years ago. Oh yeah. my gosh. Maybe even longer than that. Such a um, But yeah, but for her to come in and then go ahead and be like, okay, yeah, so this is what she's going to be. Maybe yeah. for the rest of her career. Yeah. She can go out and do other stuff like all these others have. But I think she became Captain Marvel. I think yeah. it happened in this movie. And so I super pumped that because um, Marvel does do this thing often to where like I'm worried that this is where they'll screw up or this yeah. is going to be, they're going to have to find a way to creatively get around this. But sure, yeah. I think she made it a little easier on them. I will never forget telling people that Marvel... Marvel shot themselves in the foot by greenlighting a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I remember telling people like, do you understand Groot's deal? Like, he's a tree. Like, how are they going to make that work? But I totally agree. Yeah, like, yeah. Marvel consistently proves me wrong. Like, no, we can handle this. Just yeah. trust us. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so th- she's my super pump. I think that she did such a great job. Yeah. And it is, Captain Marvel is feels as powerful. Like, she feels almost like Marvel's Superman. Yeah, to to me the the comparison that I keep thinking is like sort of like Thor of just like yeah. how are you going to stop this guy? Yeah. Like how are you going to stop this girl when she goes off? Yeah, like, and she did such a good job too though cuz like one of the things to me about Superman and again, I'm way less educated on that is he doesn't really have personality. 
I don't traditionally know. Traditionally speaking, he yeah. Kind of traditionally doesn't, speaking, yeah. he doesn't really have sort of an all-American Boy Scout. Yeah, he he gets to be. I don't know, but I thought Captain Marvel was going to have to be that way. Doge is but about it to feel like that. I know. Jump out of his, I'm having explode. trouble talking because like, you tricked me into it. You got to stop getting tricked. You, you've been tricked into I've been your last several times. Five episodes worth of I know. I wasn't pumps. ready for us to get here. So she, w- I had a moment whenever she's fighting off the accusers, which, by the way, big pump on including the accusers and Lee Pace is back. Pump on using excellent. the ac- accusers. Dump on. I want him more. If you're gonna give me Lee Pace's Ronan, if he's gonna suit up anyway, right? Show me more. So I had a moment after she. Uh, after she chases them off and we get the exact shot that we've gotten in every Superman movie yes. where she's floating above Earth. Arms outstretched. Almost almost like a crucifix position. Mm-hmm. She's floating up above the Earth, arms outstretched, looking down on the people that she has to protect. And that's when I realized Captain Marvel is the best Superman movie since the first Christopher Reeve Superman. Wow. And my pump, my super pump, is how how well this story was done. Like this movie to me, like it feels like a really great, really modern Superman story. Like we told the story of that archetype of somebody who doesn't remember their past. They think they're one thing. They discover that they, everything that they've built their life on is a lie. And so they have to learn the truth of their identity, embrace that and use that new identity for good to protect people and to help people. And I think that Brie Larson is perhaps the best Superman since Christopher Reeve. That's great. I love that. Uh, yeah. I'm glad that you brought up Superman, yeah. but I, I, that that's, I left with the overwhelming feeling of like the tagline for the Christopher Reeve one was like, you'll believe a man can fly. Yeah. You guys remember that? Yes. Uh, that's the feeling that I left the theater with. It's like, you will believe a woman can fly. Yeah. I that's absolutely great. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. Believe <clears throat> in what, in Brie Larson. Yeah. Person. Speaking of flying, by the way, the airborne combat was so good. It was so yeah. good. like so awesome. Her just going through that entire mm-hmm. ship was and all that kind amazing. of stuff. Amazing. Yeah. But I think too, like, so I'm kind of figuring out more of what I was trying to say. And you've already touched on, yes, like your reiterations of that is perfect. And I love what you had to say about it. I think too, it was like um Captain Marvel and Brie Larson as Captain Marvel has more layers than I thought. Yeah. She would in terms of emotion and like the kind of personality that you would have. Like, cause Captain America, I mean, Steve Rogers is just like. We know what he's going to be. Right. Like he's going to be, and it's not that Captain Marvel can be swayed to be selfish or anything like that, but I think there was just more layers than I expected. There's stakes. Like the stake is not, are they going to do the right thing? But it's, what is it going to cost them? Because I know they're going to do the right thing, but what will it cost them? Yeah. That's good. So after we get the big airborne fight, we do end up in the desert, crashed next to your boy Jude's ship. Yep. And we get my second favorite scene in the whole movie which is the reversal of the trope of fight me man v man, fight me one v one. Yep. No powers, let's do this. I love that And then she that just so blasts much. him. And I I like yelled because yeah. I was like, I, I was dreading the moment that this movie became, because the second you wrap it back around to, I'm going to prove it to him that I'm a better fighter than him. It's all of a sudden about a dude again. It's all of a sudden about her proving something to a dude again exactly. instead of just being her own it character. It accidentally becomes Wonder Woman. Right. Yep. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I've been trying not to use the W yeah. word in this hey. review and just let it stand on its own. This is a better Wonder Woman movie than Wonder Woman. At me, I don't care. I agree with you. There's no love interest. To, like she doesn't need one. She's whatever. She has no thing. love interest. It's she's a great thing. She's not. Her actions are not defined by a yeah. man. I love it. But she just blasts him. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, yes. In much the same way that Indiana Jones shoots that sword guy. Right. Exactly. Yeah. There's no monologue. There's no so speech. So very much like she that. Doesn't, she doesn't bow to his will when he's like, fight me. Prove to me that you can do this. Yeah. That she was just great. Pump. Blasts him straight into some rocks. I've got and nothing to prove to you. So good. Oh, that's and, so good. I mean, pump on Marvel Studios for, now there's been stuff that had came up about uh, Elizabeth Olsen to where she felt she was too like asking for Wii Sports with her costume and stuff. But mm. I'm so glad that like the Wasp Captain Marvel completely covered. Like we don't need, because it feels like, especially in like comic books, a lot of the times it's just this objectification. And so, right, way and to I, not even let that sneak in. To me, it's this kind of thing where it's like in in the fiction, it's like I'm not saying everybody has to walk around like a Handmaid's Tale character and like cover from head to toe, but like make it make sense. Cap Cap doesn't show his pecs in his suit for a reason. Right, he needs protection. Right, like it's, I'm fighting. That's my thing. Is like I I don't care. About, I'm I'm less concerned about like are you covered from head to like 
the suit serves a purpose or yeah, else exactly. you don't like, what is the point? Thankfully, yeah. Marvel has really gotten away from that. And, and DC too, like, like modern comics has really, really gotten away from, let me just draw the most exposed skin that I can on these female characters. Right. Yeah. And I really appreciate that. Cause like you said, it doesn't make sense at There's all. There's no reason for it. Yeah. And that, that's, that's why a lot of those uh, properties get bad raps too. So we end the movie with uh, a nice scratch to Fury's face. And do, do we talk about Goose enough? Goose is great. Like Goose was, I mean, that was that was fun for sure. Fun, funny, I did, kind of scary. I really did not think that they were going to go there with Goose. Yeah, like I, I was, I was <laughs> just assessing my expectations. And I was like, I know Goose is a what Flurkin. Yeah, Flurkin, Flurkin, Flurkin. Yeah, I, was like, I know that he is one of those things. And I know that that's a weird, like, alien thing. I don't think they're going to do that in this movie, but they did. They and did. I loved it. Yeah. I hope he comes back with her. Yeah. Because um, he's not going to age like a normal cat. Or wait, no, he stayed behind. Yeah, he's with S.H.I.E.L.D. That's how yeah. S.H.I.E.L.D. keeps the Tesseract. Right, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, oh. I didn't even super dump. But when Coulson walks in and talks with Nick Fury there at the towards the very end, it made me think about this. But I, I really, I think I wanted to see more of him. Yeah. I yeah, I that. agree. Because it, I love Clark Gregg. Yeah, it felt more like a, it felt more like an homage, like an inappropriate homage, yeah. because we know he he gone. Yeah. So it was like a, well, I don't know. There were some moments. Little... Yeah. There were some moments, but yeah. that was my super dumb. No, I just thought that. there could have been more there. I'm glad. I mean, <laughs> if it was at the sacrifice of that was to be able to give us more time with Fury and Captain Amer- Captain Marvel. <laughs> I was going to call her Cap, and I was like, I can't do that. No, but she is kind of. Yeah. Oh, man. It's so good. Um, but she she leaves. So that's where she's at. She she gives him the pager that she's upgraded with galactic paging technology. Yep. And she bounces to find the scroll of Homeland. And we can assume that's where she's been for the last 26-odd years. Yeah. Right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the movie ends, and we get a flash to the end game. And let's actually not talk about that mid-credit yeah. scene. Mid-credit scene, I am, I'm 99% sure, is just a, str- a clip from end game. Much like uh, the Civil War shot yeah. of, of Bucky Bucky's with his arm in the vice. vice. Yeah. Yep. So we're not going to talk about that mid-credit scene um, because Endgame's coming out in a couple of months, and that's getting real close. Not even yeah. six weeks from the day that Captain Marvel dropped. Jeez, that is so close. That that's is massive. wild. Yep. Absolutely wild. Massive. So is it time to write this movie? Uh, post credit scene, Goose <clears throat> pukes up the Tesseract on a Nick Fury's desk. That's how S.H.I.E.L.D. gets the Tesseract, which Loki later steals. Um, just want to point out that Captain Marvel, at this point, is virtually a living Infinity Stone, which gets yep. me real, real amped for Endgame. Yeah, yep, yep, that's yep, very yep, cool. Yep, yep. That's very, very cool. Yeah, uh, the possibilities of where this can go now uh, is in, the best part, yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> so uh, we hear Two Chunks and a Hunk have partnered with Science. You know the one from Pegasus? You've heard of it. Have partnered with Science nice. to rate movies. Go to science.com backslash Two Chunks for 50% <laughs> off your order. <laughs> Enter code Two Chunks. 50% off your order. We have created the Scientific Cinema... Your Science Order? Your, si- your order Can I get some scale? Science? Your, your order of some science? science? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like... Tubes. Four months of science for the price of two months. Wow, Ooh. that's not even enough. We've created the scientific cinema scale, and it is perfect and as follows. The best thing we can ever say about a movie is own it, don't lend it, buy, buy that, that poster. poster. The next best thing we can ever say is buy it. Followed by rent it, then stream it. After that is forget it. And last, but certainly least, the worst thing we can ever say about a movie. God, God has, has forsaken us. Intelligence has forsaken. Wow, very nice. Who wants to go first? I will. Okay. Uh, As you all know, I'm contractually obligated every single Marvel episode to say that I own the special edition of every single one of these movies. So I'm not going to just not buy this one. Luckily, that lines up with a rating that I would give it. I would say buy this movie. This is an excellent, excellent movie. This kind of, it joins the ranks of movies to me that um, if Jess and I have a daughter... I don't think that we'll watch The Little Mermaid and say, hey, be like Ariel. Right. But I think we'll watch things like Moana and things like Captain Marvel and say, hey, don't you want to be like Moana? Don't you want to be like Carol? Look at all the things that they can do. They don't have to define themselves by their relationship to other people. Right. They have their own wants and their own desires. That's cool. And they accomplish them. That's good. Yeah. I. uh, So I'm also going to give this movie a buy it. Um, It was between a rent it and a buy it for me. But here's the thing that pushed it over the edge. 
Callie talked about this movie from the moment we got in the car until we got back to the apartment last night. And it's because she was so into the character of Carol. Just did the she, same thing. She was just like, Carol's so cool. And like, and hearing Callie geek out, I was like, this is what I've sounded like every time I've left a yeah. comic book movie. And I wanted to geek out too, but she was busy doing it for me. And so yeah. I was just like, oh, this makes me so happy. Like, she is so pumped about this. And for me, that is more than enough to be like, dang, there's so much here and like so much to this that I also loved and Callie loved even, I mean, that's a buy it for me. Yeah, I think what it means and what what it's put in place for the bigger picture of the next phase of Marvel, because it's asking so much. There might've not been more pressure on a single phase than right now. Maybe, oh, yeah. maybe than the first one, like the first Iron Man, obviously tons of pressure because they've got this huge idea, this can't flop. But this one is like, this is what we've made and we either have to really aggressively try and be much, much better or just completely different. We'll yeah. just do a completely yep. different angle. Um, and the fact that it's done so much for the momentum of phase four is a buy it for me. Mm-hmm. I think it, I think yep. it, man, I always, and we talked about this with so many different series, but like early Harry Potter, it was like that had to, it just had to work. Yeah. And the fact that yeah. in, those weren't my favorite, but the fact that like Azkaban and stuff like that pulled things off just to give it the momentum to go through, like, I can't even imagine the pressure. That's yeah. I, like, do they even bring that up? Like, when you sit down after after filming a scene, do you be like, okay, this has to work? Because yeah. as an actor too, she's doing the research. If she wasn't a Marvel head yet, Brie Larson's going into this is like, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm the first female, yeah, big time superhero lead coming alongside the first African American lead that's about to be. So I'm glad that you, phase four. I'm glad that you brought that up because talking about our phase four prediction of who's going to lead the Avengers. I love the effect, the fact that we now have a, an Avengers that is put very potentially led by a woman, an African king, and a kid. Yeah, like right. that is that is infinitely more interesting to me than an Avengers that's led by two white dudes in their forties. Yeah, like that's cool and that's great, and I love those characters. But this this feels representative of an entirely different demographic oh, yeah. that can get to enjoy these stories because they see themselves in these stories. Yeah, and those yeah. original leads were like white playboy. White super soldier, white god. Yeah. yeah. You know, and Literally. then all men. Literally. And then now we've got this. And so, yeah, I love it. That's no, good. So uh, to close out today's episode, I would like for each of, each of us to say our name and to uh, take a guess at what we think the other end of Nick Fury's pager message said when Captain Marvel opened her wrist thing. Mm, this is the one that he sends. When he sends the emergency, what does her wrist say? What message did she receive? For two chunks and a hunk, I'm Jordan, and I think her wrist said, hey, it's me, Nick. Do you remember me, Nick, from Earth <laughs> when we fought? Never mind. I need your help. Can you please come? I'm Doge, and I think he was just asking her where to buy flirking food because they don't carry that at PetSmart. Yeah. Yeah. Can you come help? He's hungry. <laughs> he did that right before. Yeah. He's like, he's like, like he just got to feed the cat. Yeah, he doesn't care about the Earth. He's just like, I got to make sure my flirkin stays alive. <laughs> So sometimes when we're at, we're when, sorry who are you? I'm Carter. And sometimes when we are in a hurry or we're distracted by other things and we're trying to send a text, sometimes those don't come across how we intend them, uh, either by a misspelling or predictive text thought it was a different word. So he says, "Hold on to your boots." <laughs> sure. But what he was meaning was your butts, right. which was what they agreed was going to be like, this is always before stuff goes down. Right. Yeah. That's when you'll know. So but it was is, like- Is his, Jurassic Park then canon to the MCU? That's what I'm saying. I like, we'll talk way more about that at Endgame. When, when Star-Lord comes in on a raptor? Yeah. <laughs> that's when- What a space raptor. <laughs> yes. A space raptor. A spap, spaptor. A, ra- a race. Nice. <laughs> <laughs>